God's beauty is all around us and my goal as an artist is to capture and interpret that beauty on canvas and to take you, the viewer, along with me on this painting journey. Hello and welcome to Painting Journeys. My name is Kitty Lynn Klisch and I'm very glad that you joined me today. This show is going to be a continuation of the last show that I did. You've always had the chance to see me um, start paintings and work on them in the middle, but you haven't seen any finished work yet, and I thought this would be a great opportunity. We're in Tuscany, Italy, San Gimignano, at a working family farm that has uh, been in the family since the uh, 18th century. And the farm is very old. A lot of people have uh, lived there and done their work there, um, thrived. They have a winery. They grow all their own beef, their, their uh, flour for their bread. They, they do everything. They're totally self-sustaining. And not only that, but they have a, a, a store. You can go there, taste wine. It was one of the marvelous, most marvelous stops that I had in my tour of Italy. And so today, I want to show you, um, I've, I've shown you what uh, the painting place looked like. And this is just a little piece of it. And now I'm going to show you where I left off on the last show. Um, it was what you call a sketch in oil, just trying to lay in my shapes and some of the values and colors and not a lot of, of detail, as you can see. Um, it's, it's very loose, very sketchy. And to tell you the truth, with this particular piece, I really um, took a leap and decided to challenge myself, do something a little more difficult, a little more intricate. So I'm going to put this up here so that I can see what the photo looks like. And I'm going to show you now what I have done in between the time of my last show and, and now today. As you can see, from what I showed you before where we left off, um, the building wasn't really refined at all. It didn't have the nice strong patterns of light and dark and the little detail of the stone underneath the plaster. The windows weren't done before. This area here wasn't done. And the um, actually, the wine tun was a really a little too large. Now I still have some work to do in this area here. I'm going to make that a little smaller and a little darker. And I was looking at this before uh, a little earlier today and I discovered that the door looks just a little crooked to me. So I'm going to uh, round this out a little bit more and straighten up the boards on the door and I think that will help the door to look a little uh, like it's more upright. Um, I've got the, the leaves from the ivy to put in and I've, I've got this tree to put back in and then there's this marvelous little cart that looks like it's made out of, out of branches. You see that there? And, uh, and of course, we have the pots of flowers and everything. So today we're going to try for finish. And I think I want to make my corrections first. So with that said, let me get my palette and we'll get started. First of all, because that door bothers me so much, I want to step back and take a look at that and see what can I do here to make this look a, a little more um, convincing 
That's the word I want, convincing. I want to convince you that you're actually looking at a door that is from the 18th century. If I bring it over a little bit this way, that'll help to start straightening it out. And I'll take my knife and as you can see, I'm just, this is my palette. It's just the regular basic palette. I have some mixtures on here that were from before, the last time I worked on the painting. I did spend quite a bit of time between the last time that I saw you and this time working on it, about five hours to be exact, because I just wasn't getting the feel of the of the environment of the place that I wanted. It has to have a certain feel to it. Um, some, some painters are, they paint more intellectually and some painters, meaning that they paint out of their head technically with what they know and that's not a bad thing. And some painters paint um, instinctually and they paint um, from their heart or their gut and I am one of the latter. I have to feel what I am working on. Yes, I know the rules and but their rules are, you know, they're made to be broken most of the time. I'm straightening this up I'm kind of standing at an angle here, so I'm counting on my instinct, my intuition, artistic intuition, to tell me that I'm straightening up the, the slats on this door. Anyway, that's quite an interesting thing. You'll see painters that, you know, that, that whose work looks very correct, very proper, but maybe it won't grab you. Maybe it won't um, make you feel excitement when you look at it, make you, make you want to go into the painting. And usually that's because those painters have are more intellectual painters that are painting from their head. And I, I don't want to say too much about that because I don't want everybody to think I'm knocking anybody because I'm not. We all have our own way of doing things with painting as well as with life. So I enough is said about that. All right, now I'm going to step back and just in a second here and just double check and make sure that this looks like it's a little straighter up and down and a little more I see I need a little dark right over here in this corner to bring this edge down right here. Okay, now. Oh, that's a lot better. I hope you can see that. I hope you can see that, that the change that what just occurred. You know how I made the door look like it actually belongs in there instead of, instead of, um, Just being there. There's a difference between belonging and being. If you're just there, you know, you have no purpose. But if you belong there, then you have a purpose. Okay, now I think I'm going to put a little dark in here. And I want, I have those beautiful 18th century. hinges on the door, so we want to put those on, and of course, the door handle. And I'm just going to highlight it with a little bit of gold, just so that we know there's the door. Some 
take that down a little bit. There we go. Okay. Yeah, that does it for me. All right. Now, I think before I get too much into the trees and things like that, I think I better continue to adjust. Now, I don't really look at this as fixing. I, I consider it adjusting. When, um, when you paint, you have to be open to the fact that the painting is going to tell you what it needs. You have to be open to that. You have to be ready. You know, you can't just say, oh, well, I put that on there like that, and now I'm going to leave it. No, you constantly look. You constantly adjust. And I know I'm coming in with some nice dark colors because what's underneath here is pretty dry. And I'm just going to soften that in. But I think that's going to be a much better shape. And then this back in here, I'm going to have this be a little darker. It doesn't show it up here, but that's OK. That's OK if it doesn't show it up there. I know that it should be a little darker in order to have the light show up. Without the dark, there is no light. So try to mix up some of that darker kind of um, stucco-like stuff that they have over this and coming in here. That's not quite dark enough, Kitty. Anyway, as I was saying, you know, you have to be open to change. Painting is almost like giving birth or, or watching a child grow. You know, the child grows and changes. You have to adapt yourself to grow with it. Or neither one of you flourish. Hmm. OK, that, that looks better. Now I think I'll go ahead and put some nice rich color on that wine ton. That looks like it would hold a ton of wine, doesn't it? Pretty big. Just a, just a little bit. Now here we have a, something that's a little bit of a challenge to paint because we have something that's, that is circular, but the slats are horizontal, but the movement of the object is vertical. So we're kind of like fighting ourselves here. So we're going to have to get the colors that we want on there. And then we're going to have to do, go back over with the brush and make some changes in the direction with the paint. So I see a nice kind of a grayed, dark brown. It's kind of grayed, though. Put some blue in there, maybe. Yeah, right in here, OK? See how that's kind of hazy right there? Yeah. And I don't have to. I don't have to do a lot here, just a little bit, just to get it going. And then right here, we do have those bands that go around that are holding everything all together. Okay. So now, um, I'm going to come and try to suggest. the fact that they're that these are boards just a little little touch whoops i didn't want to get into that red kitty lizard and crimson my favorite color it's so much my favorite it jumps on my brush All right, not too much detail. We don't want too much detail. OK, 
Okay, and then we'll come back over and make a place for the bands. As I was telling you in my last show, when I was talking to you about how we had the most marvelous lunch, all the wine we could drink, the owners were such gracious hosts, and it was just such a marvelous place to be. There were children and goats and chickens and everything all running around and all free. Nobody was caged up. Everything was just peaceful, beautiful. I'm using my wipeout tool to take a little bit of that out. I don't like that. It's a little too bright a red right there. See, no matter how um, far along you are as an artist, you still make mistakes. And when you do, you have to realize it and be open to correcting it. There we go. Okay, now I'm making, I'm going to try to make some um, places for the bands to be. So we have one, two, three. And then in towards the back of the barrel, we have three more. Be careful to follow that curve that I have there. Okay. All right, now then, inside those bands, we need to put a little paint. Just taking a little bit of orange and calming it down a little bit. And I don't even have to go all the way down and around. Just a suggestion. And then the same thing in the back. I don't want to make this so identical to the, to the photo that the viewer wouldn't, doesn't want to, to see the painting because they just feel like they're seeing a photo. There we go. Okay. All right, that's looking pretty good. This says <clears throat> here, Fattorio, Fattoria, San Dominato, San Gimignano. That's a mouthful, isn't it? I don't speak Italian, as you can tell. Okay, I think I'm happy enough with that. And I think now, I better sketch in this little wagon here and get a start on him. I'm going to do a little preliminary sketch on him. Now, there is a, um, going from the window down, window down, it's overlapping the back of this, so there is a pot sitting right here. Uh, not a pot, it's like a, a, like a, 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 a keg. And that's right there, okay? So I'm going to sketch that in because my cart is going from this corner and behind that and is coming out here. I'm going to have to go a little lighter. I guess this is more of a how-to show than you're used to seeing when you go on one of the journeys with me. But I just thought it would be good for you to 
see what goes into the actual finish work of a painting. Okay, that goes a little bit further than the window. Now, of course, you know, when you're, when you're judging from something that you have up, uh, already on your canvas, you best hope that you're um, correct with where you have everything. Because if you're not, then what you're painting is not going to be the correct shape. Okay. And now, so this is where the back of the card is. And here, that's even a little darker colored um, because it's more in shadow. And here is the bottom of the card. Oops, coming right here to here, okay? I'm gonna take the wipeout tool and wipe out that wrong line. Swipe out tools are so neat and just get rid of stuff so easily. Alrighty. Now then there's something that's coming over here like this and coming down and we have the tire and it's a, or the wheel and it's a big wheel. Now this is from the painting before and is obviously in the wrong place. And we'll have to move those pots over. But it looks like that I have condensed this quite a bit. And, you know, really, that's okay, too. Um, okay, here's my wheel. And it, ha it does have the hub. I'm going to stick that um, where the axle goes across and that's going to be a little bit darker and that's going to be going back here this way and I'm not going to pay put a whole lot into this because it's not to me it's not the most important part of the painting I just want to try to suggest it all right over here um, hmm, looks like I came a little too far here. This should only come to here, okay. And then there's a, a line going down. So we'll just get rid of this. Yeah, see how easy that is? You mess up, you just touch it up a little bit. There you go. Um, okay. Now this is quite light on this wheel right here. All right, so that is there, that's coming down. The wheel is coming right from about here and around. Okay, and then it gets darker as it goes down. And it's back here. And there's the other hub right here. Okay. Now the front of this is much closer together. And so that's coming down like like so and coming across to here. And this is coming here. Okay, and then we have another wheel right in here. Okay. And this one is darker. Now, I really should have what's painted behind there painted first, but there is a pot right there that is going to cover that eventually. 
Okay. Now we have a lot of, of uh, this has got some bright highlight on this one over here too. And as I said, I'm just going to suggest this. I don't, this painting is not about this little cart, as cute as the cart is. It's not about that. Oh, I see a cart coming. I hope you do too. <laughs> Looks like we need a little more shadow under this area here. Set that down a little bit. And that's going to have the green plant in front of it. That could be so have a little more shadow. You know, I hate to admit this, but when I was in Italy, I gained so much weight. Ah. And I'm still fighting to take it off. Oh, well. That was just an extra little tidbit there. Probably didn't want to know. There we go. But it's nothing like the truth, huh? Maybe if I own up to it, I'll be able to get rid of it. All right, I'm gonna make this a little bit here. And I'm gonna be moving on here pretty soon. I'm just gonna make a few little, little goodies like this. And a few in the back. And then we have this big post that's coming across. There, and another one that is coming down. It's a little more red in it. Here. And there's a tongue for the wagon to be pulled by coming out right here. It's a little bit of dark in the center there. Okay. Okay, now I think we'll come back to that in a little while. Refine it a little bit more, but at least we have it in there now. We know where it is. All right, let's get this little um, barrel oaken barrel on there. It's really quite dark. Now in order to have the dark on there, we have to, or I mean, in order to have this light enough, we have to have the dark. So something has to be, the light is obviously coming from this direction. So we have to have some areas there that are a little darker on this. Mm 
Okay, and then it has a nice bright orange pot sitting on it. And it does have some rather there we go. Everything is there's some things on here that I want to be really identifiable and some things that I just want to suggest because that will make it much more interesting than if I make the whole thing very perfect. We want it to be a little painterly and have a suggestion, more of a suggestion. Okay, I'll put some light on this side. There we go. Okay, now this has purple flowers in it. And I think that would look good on there. Some purple flowers. And there's two little buckets inside there, two little flower pots, rather, that are sitting here. I'll have to just put those in and then put the, uh, the board across in front of them. Uh, go over them and put that in. OK, now we'll just take the this and make it go across there again. There we go. Okay, um, here I want to see some dark spokes. And right up in here, we need a little bit of dark underneath that. That needs to be softened a little bit. It comes back here like that. And then there is something that is kind of bright that comes over like that. And I'm not sure what that is, but I do see it. Oh, OK, I see what it's doing. It comes down to the end of the hub, right in there. It's kind of, now see, there I go. I tell you I'm not going to go for detail. And what do I do? I start putting in detail. Just what I didn't want to do. But I want this to show up somewhat for you. And, you know, I'm really glad that you tuned in today and that you're joining me on this journey across this canvas all the way over to Italy and they certainly do things differently our next show I was thinking I'm not quite done with Italy yet I was thinking for our next show that we would go to the Italian Riviera doesn't that sound good? The Italian Riviera. Yeah. For our next show, that's where we go. We'll see the beautiful ocean. It's gorgeous over there. But it was gorgeous here, too. I don't know. Where isn't it gorgeous? When you can paint and you love that you have been blessed with the gift of creating, where isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful everywhere. But then again, I guess it is what you make it, huh? OK, now I, I want some really nice darks back behind all of this greenery. So I'm going to come in there. Ooh, that's not nice. I don't like that at all. So I'll wipe it out. My teacher always told me, <clears throat> when in doubt, wipe it out. 
Pretty good, huh? Pretty simple rule. Works every time. Alrighty. Now, maybe this will be, it. yeah, that's it. That's what I want. I just want to kind of scumble this in. I just, I, because I am going to uh, put leaves and things over this, but I have to have a base. I have to have something underneath this for the leaves to cling to. And it's dark, it's dark underneath there. And then all those leaves are coming out, um, sticking out. So we, we want, this is coming over here like this. And then there's a little mess right, mass right there, mess. <laughs> yeah, a mess too, uh, there. And then this is coming down here over the little um, porch or the shelter, whatever you call that. I don't know, I can't think right now. There we go. Coming over here and up here and down here. And down over the window and down in here. And you're probably thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, what is she doing? She's making a total mess. Oh yeah, I am. But I'll fix it. Okay. There we go. Now we got we got stuff growing everywhere. You know, I had thought because when I was in Italy, there were roses on the bushes, rose bushes everywhere. And I had thought on my way to the studio today about making, instead of just making this ivy, I had thought about making it, turning it into a pink rose bush. What do you think? Should I? I think it would be kind of cool. Yeah, why not? Let's see what happens if we do that. Well, first of all, though, we've got to get some nice bright greens on here. <laughs> I'm hoping the cameraman lets me know how much time I have left here pretty soon. Because... If he doesn't tell me, then I'm going to run out of time and I'm not going to get this finished for you. So, cameraman, I'm waiting for you to tell me how much time I have. Okay. Now, you see here? I'm just going in there and... Maybe these leaves will have some, a little bit of pink on them too. Better use a different brush. You know what happens when you um, paint with the same colored brush all the time? You end up with mud. Trust me, it's total, complete mud. Okay, now what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna put the roses in quite dark. We do want roses, right? Right. We do. Okay. I like it. that a lot. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, now I think I'm going to go with a little bit lighter and I'm going to put a little bit of orange into that alizarin crimson color 
and make just a little bit of a coral look to kind of highlight some of these roses. Now that's too light, see? That doesn't look real now because it's too light. So I'm probably gonna have to go back in there with some green and make that a little darker. But I do like those flowers. I do. I love flowers. And <clears throat> everywhere I went, the flowers, the fruit and flowers were so abundant in Italy. It was just marvelous. So I'll come back in here with a a little bit of the green, and I'll come in between and break that up a little bit, and then it won't look like such a big um, clumping of, of uh, stuff. All right, now we'll just kind of like leave that like that. We don't want the same amount of detail everywhere. Oh, we already talked about that, didn't we? Yeah, okay, I love that, all right. Don't misunderstand me. It isn't that I love what I'm doing. I just love the way it looks because it's just so much fun to make it pretty. All right. So now we're going to have some light over here, and we're going to put some, a few roses, a few more roses in there, and just some leaves and some little bit around here, hanging off, just who knows, maybe there's a little rose coming over that window right there, and coming out here a little bit, up there, a little tiny bit up here, because they kind of crawl, right? That's right, they do, they're climbers, yeah, okay, yeah, now we'll take that pink brush again, and we'll add a few more roses. Now these are going to be quite dark. I'm going to go real dark at first. Okay, and I'll wipe that off and I'll go back into my coral, warm it up a little bit. And now we'll just hit some little highlights on these guys to kind of make them pop. <laughs> I like that. Okay. All right. So now we've got a pot over here with flowers. And uh, let me see. You know, I think we'll have some yellow flowers instead of those dra drab purple ones. You see, that's the thing. It's our painting, and we can do anything we want with it. If we want the flowers to be yellow instead of pink or purple or whatever we can because it's our painting. So let's just have some yellow ones right there. I think that would look pretty cool. Now first of all though we've got to have a little greenery for them to be growing out of and so let me see here. My cameraman just gave me the high sign that I have 15 minutes left. I cannot believe that I've been with you already this long, and I have to start wrapping it up here. Where does the time go, huh? Okay, yellow flowers, here we come. First of all, we're gonna put a darker 
type of yellow on here to kind of, oh, I know what these will be. They'll be hibiscus. They had hibiscus all over the place. Yellow hibiscus. That's cool. Yeah. Now the only thing that we need though is a little more orange on the pot there. A little, little, little more of a highlight. I'm getting really excited now. I'm excited about what I'm doing because it's, I can see how it's coming together. And coming to, not coming together so much as coming to life. It's coming to life. And it's exciting then. We'll just put a little highlight right here. Now we have to soften that in a little bit. There we go. Oh, that's getting, oh, I love it, I love it. Okay. Um, all righty, let me see now. Now we got to kick it. Uh, let's see. Yellow brush. I don't know where the yellow brush went. We'll just take another one. We'll take a clean one. And we'll put some nice little highlights on these little guys in here. Okay, there we go. You might want to lighten that barrel up just a bit. It seems just a little too, little too dark. Just take a little tiny bit here and just lighten it up just a little. Okay. No, these little pots down here, I think that's where we'll have the purple flowers. What do you say? We have the yellow, so we may as well have the complement of the yellow, which would be the violet. So we'll have some pretty little violet flowers down there in those pots that are in the wagon. You know, how much fun is this? I'll tell you. I feel like the luckiest person in the world to be able to just do what I love and love what I do. You know, what more could you ask for? And they did have flowers everywhere in this place. So I'm so glad that, that I'm taking the risk and adding these flowers and adding that excitement. Okay, now we'll have to get busy here and get this other tree on. And thank you. My cameraman just told me 10 minutes. Okay, kitties, so we are going to have to rush now. Or, because we certainly don't want to see this painting on the next show. That's for sure. So, we're just going to kick it and get it in there. This would be kind of dark right here. be a shadow coming out under there. <laughs> Maybe there would be a little bit of light behind it. There we go. Mm-hmm. Okay, we need just a little highlight on the wagon right here. We 
Okay. Now we need to finish this tree and laying the brush flat, I don't want a real um, thick. I have the under painting on there, but this is a very feathery looking tree. So I'm laying the brush sort of flat so and kind of like scribbling it outward so that I can get the look of a um, really um, feathery looking tree, soft and feathery. That's what I'm thinking, that's what I'm telling myself, soft and feathery. Yeah, that's it. There, there we go. All right, now, for the most part, that looks just fine, okay? Because see, all of our intensity is right here, so we don't really need that much intensity in this tree. And we've got a couple of other things that we definitely want to do be, so that we can call this done. Um, you know, I think I put too much highlight on this. I don't care for that. I'm going to knock that down. See what I mean about you constantly have to adjust, adjust and readjust. And don't be afraid to go back into it, but don't overwork it. That's the thing. If you put a highlight on or you put something on that you don't like, then don't just keep smudging it. Just a quick little brush stroke and let that be it. There we go. We've got the highlights on there. Whoops. I'm trying to go too fast, I guess. All right, we'll just knock that down a little bit. There we go. Good. Okay, now we've got this pot in the foreground. I'm probably talking faster now too, huh? Because I'm really trying to crank it out now. I think that pot looks kind of blue in the foreground over here. Right in here. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll lighten it a little bit. And then we've got to put something there that's inside that pot. Um, hmm, what would be inside that pot? Well, it could be a little tiny baby cypress tree if we wanted it to be real interesting. Or it could just be some greenery. There we go. And then right in here now, we have another pot. Hmm, now I've got five minutes left, kids. Woo hoo. Time to hustle. I want this orange pot right here, and it's going to be sitting right there in front of that wagon wheel. Okay right there and it's pretty good size little splash of warmth on it whoa not that much kitty boom 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 knock that down okay and then i think we'll have more purple flowers on that right in front there okay Right in here, we're going to have more purple flowers coming up. Well, who knows what they are? We don't care. Just as long as they read right. 
They read like, um, like flowers, then they're flowers. Okay, and then, whoops, that's a little crooked there. Okay, we've got to put a little bit of a dark shadow underneath certain things here to sit them down. See how that dark shadow sits it right down? There we go, okay. Okay, and now then we're going to take this big brush and some light. And we're going to lighten this up. All the way right up to that doorway. This back here will still be in shadow. And there would be some shadow right back here from this spot. Under here would be shadow. And over here, little shadow from the wagon. And we've got some shadow in here. This would have some shadow in it. Maybe we'll just kind of go like that. Okay. Alrighty, and then I think I will sign my name and call it done. Okay, there it is. It's all done. And I had a lot of fun painting it for you. Um, thank you so much for joining me today on this journey through painting on canvas. And be sure and catch the next show when we will be on the Italian Riviera. Once again, this is Kitty Lynn Klisch with Painting Journeys. Thank you and bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm.